Welcome back, Bilge Rats. It's been a long while since we've last seen each other. Some amongst you will remember that I was once the Pirate King until I set down the crown and walked away to live amongst the people. But the time has now come for me to take back up the mantle and return to the Sea of Thieves. Join me as I seek to reclaim my rightful spot amongst the pirate lords in these tales of bloodlust. Bloodlust, bloodlust, bloodlust. I, I, I was trying to do like a, like a dramatic echo thing. Um, never mind. Moving on. So I logged in and spawned at Sanctuary Outpost. I got used to the controls for a second and questioned why I was double gunning anymore. It has been some time since I was on the seas, so I will inevitably be rusty. So I grabbed some maps off of the quest board to get me started. Then I decided to load up on some supplies. I know that I can buy supplies, but I wanted to do this old school for the day for the fun. And since I'm a poor with only 3.5 million gold, this took me a while, but I was finally stocked up. Before heading out, I took a quick look at the Pirate Emporium and I snagged the Graveyard Grim pet bundle before deciding to set sail. As I was making my final preparations, a Fort Skull appeared in the sky, so I figured, why not start with the classic? I lifted anchor and set sail towards the fort, taking in the views along the way and getting shot at by the sea forts with garbage aim and enjoying the new guild update on my ship. Now, I did mention that I was rusty, so rusty, in fact, that I forgot that the forts shoot cannons, and I got myself into a bit of a situation. Okay, all right, all right, all right, buds. All right, buds. All right, buds. Chill, 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 chill. I returned fire on those skeleton chumps who seem to have forgotten who their king is and parked my ship with the utmost elegance and grace. This was a scuffed approach, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna salvage it. Setting foot on the fort, I reached level three renown. We are really starting from nothing this season. And then I got to work vanquishing the eternal bone menace, men menaces, menaceae, uh, I killed the skeletons. This all went very smoothly and I made zero mistakes. Nope, 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 oh no, shit. Hey, you know what? It, at least we took them with us. So that's, that's a plus. Like if I'm gonna go, they're coming with me. After a short stay on the ferry, I got back into the fight, but was immediately peppered with bullets. Guys, can we chill with the guns? Was this America? I slashed and blundied my way through the waves, narrowly missing a keg along the way until finally the Ashen Guardian and Keymaster spawned. I made quick work of them, and then it was just the two-faced scoundrel standing between me and the booty. Jesus Christ. I tried to make use of my surroundings, grabbing kegs as well as my trusty blundy and stabbing stick to put the bonehead back into the dirt. And finally, with the key in hand, it was time to claim the loot. It took some time, but I painstakingly loaded up the loot, making sure to keep a weather die on the horizon for any sales that might be approaching. I was almost finished hauling the loot when chat decided to let me know about the update where I can use the chest in my hands and pick up the loot without dropping it. Thank you for waiting until the end. Never mind. You gotta be kidding me. Now you tell me? I just did all that stuff. With the loot in hand, I made my way through an approaching storm to Daggertooth, where I quickly sold the Mega Kegs before Lightning decided to strike them. I then proceeded to sell the rest of the loot and check out this season's rewards, which were less than exciting. What's the max perk here? This is it? This is, it? This is all you get for level 100? Bro. It should always be a curse. Always. It should, it should always 100% forever be a curse. Just saying, just my, just my two cents. I also checked out the milestones. Now, I've been out of the game a long while, so this is gonna take me a lot of work. Since the storm was rolling in, I decided to try my luck with a little bit of fishing and see if I could catch some stormfish, but I only got garbage fish instead. As the storm passed, I tended to some repairs and then decided to explore the outpost for more supplies, and I found a storage crate that some thoughtful pirate left behind. I wouldn't have done it, but thank you. So I used the crate to load up and I was off to my next adventure, quickly spotting another sloop on the horizon. The ship was a distance off, but I could see that they were parked at Reapers. As I rolled into position, I fired a few uh, warning shots directly into the hole, but unfortunately the ship was abandoned, so that was boring. But it wasn't a complete waste because upon inspection of the island, I found several storage crates full of supplies. I was also able to snag a damaged rowboat from the wreckage of the ship and sailed it with ease. It took me, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it took me a minute to remember how, how to row. After attaching the dinghy, it was back to the seats. 
And while we've got a minute and we're sailing here, this is a great time to remind you that if you're enjoying the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you're feeling extra spicy, join our Discord in the description below. And hell, while you're at it, go ahead and sign away your soul and your firstborn child on the dotted line here. As I continued along, I spotted another sloop on the horizon. It was also a distance off, but I could see that it had an emissary flag, so I wanted to relieve him of that before he could turn it in. Unfortunately, I showed up just a little too late and he was able to take down the flag, but I put a few shots into his ship and also his face for good measure. And then I collected his supplies and several tridents. A little disappointed with that encounter, I sailed off through another storm to sell the tridents and some fish to the hunter's call. I'm going to be honest with you here. The PVP encounters today have left a lot to be desired and I was itching for some blood. So I decided to try my hand at the hourglass. I had a significant amount of supplies on board and it's been a while since I've played and certainly since I've seen any real combat practice, but I figured the way to kick off the rust was to jump right back in. I honestly wasn't sure what to expect as things have changed drastically for solo sloopers in the time since I was last terrorizing the seas. I wasn't sure how changes to mast integrity, double bucketing, and weapons would maybe impact my gameplay. But I started off strong, finding my positioning and unleashing a barrage of chain shots and a rigging ball in order to immobilize my target while laying into his ship the best that I could until I eventually lost my angle and he was able to get a few cheeky hits on me. While I was repairing, the enemy took the opportunity to run away towards the edge of the shroud. I was unsure if he was actively surrendering or trying to bait me into the Red Sea. Either way, I decided to keep my distance and to follow along with his movements. I think he's realizing now that we gotta duke this out. I'd rather not do it near the edge. I want to choose my battlefield here. This only ends one way, amigo. Him getting real friendly with a cannonball. Or me getting real friendly with a cannonball. To be honest with you, like, I'm, I'm, I'm good either way. We can, we can, we can settle this thing. I can go down, he can go down, it doesn't matter. What I don't want to do is just fart around the edge of the, cir the circle forever. That's coming in. That's a nice one. That's going to damn near take my head off. Eventually, the enemy ship decided to re-engage and I was able to land several shots and chain shots as I tried to find better positioning. The sloop was hesitant to take on a full-fledged fight and continued to try to run, but after a few rounds of volleys, I was able to bring down their mast again and to put an anchor ball into their hull to keep them immobilized for a full-on attack. And with that, I was finally able to secure the sink, though not everyone was happy about it. My enemy was less than happy with my chain shot usage, but let's be honest, they wouldn't have hesitated to use them against me if they had had them. So in the end, it's just another drop of salt on the sea. Emboldened by my glorious win and the thrill of the hunt, I decided to double down and try my luck on another attack, quickly matching with a new sloop in need of sinking. He's got Kraken sails. They always have Kraken sails, don't they? This battle began very quickly and with a violent exchange of cannonballs. I was able to bring down the enemy mass, but my ship was overturning and I lost my positioning and set myself up for a bombardment of lead. While making repairs below, I heard the mass fall and I knew I had to take action. My old instincts got the better of me though and forgetting the rules of the hourglass that if my ship sinks, then I lose, I foolishly decided to jump to the enemy ship and pulled their anchor. It seems my opponent had a similar idea and he was nowhere to be found on his ship. I suddenly remember that I needed to save my ship and I made a dash to try to get there, arriving just in time only to bucket myself to death, forgetting that I had water in my nope, pail. there goes my ship. Fuck! GG's bud. And just like that, the bloodlust sank to her watery grave. Interestingly enough though, it seems I wasn't the only pirate to make a mistake here as the enemy ship also sunk below the waves. It's a tie! We both sank! Damn, dude. I didn't even realize he sank too. We both did the same thing, man. We both did the same thing. That's awesome. That was fun. That was a fun one. That was way more fun than the first fight. Despite the, the tie. So technically I haven't lost yet, guys. So, technically still undefeated, I decided to call it a night on the hourglass as on the horizon a fort of fortune hung high in the clouds. Before heading out, I checked the progress and accommodations for guardians of fortune and this is going to take me a long time. After that, I grabbed a few supplies and headed out hoping to score some more loot from the fort. I arrived at the fort and pulled into the back side of the island to help hide my mass. 
I then decided to switch to some more stylish weapons. For this fort, I decided to go with the Soul Flame Cutlass and the Parrot Flitlock. I began the fort making use of the firebombs to deal with the golden skellies and complete some deeds. I'll be honest, the skeletons were making this easy on me by bringing me keg after keg for me to shoot. I shot and slashed my way into the night before noticing a sloop on the horizon. It didn't seem like it was coming for the fort, but I decided to keep an eye out for it anyway. Around the same time, I noticed a galleon spawning at an outpost just next door and became increasingly paranoid, so I set to work finishing the fort as fast as possible. The skeletons, however, had other plans and sent me promptly to the ferry where I met a fellow ill-fated traveler. Death to fire. <laughs> a likely story. With the potential threat of the galley still looming overhead, I got back to work using kegs to help finish off the red captains before moving on to Warden Chief. I smashed my way through the smoke cloud, dropped a keg or two while trying to avoid death from above. This was taking a little too long with the pistol though, so I decided to swap over to my blundy and put the warden down for good, as once again hellfire rained down from the sky. Eventually, I was victorious and hurried to open the vault so that the key would not appear on the map anymore. I was excited about the Athena's loot, as there is still a few commendations I need to finish from back in the day, and I am well and truly behind in Athena's rep uh, at 14. Now this is always my least favorite part about solo slooping, the sheer amount of time it takes to load and unload your ship. It took me a long, long, long time, but after this montage I eventually had everything loaded up and ready to go, including the kegs. I have a lot of mega kegs here, but uh, nothing will go wrong. With the loot until I headed off to Daggertooth to cash in on my efforts, but the harpoons had other plans for me. Okay, this is just stupid. You know what I want, Harpoon. You... You... You know... So, I had to run down and readjust all the loot for a better shot, and I figured I probably should sell the Athena's chest while I was at it. After finally selling all of the loot, I was able to level up Athena's to 15. Only 15 more to go. With my night beginning to wind down, I wanted to do one more piratey thing since I'm back, and I wanted to loot a sunken ship that I had seen on the way in. I explored the ship, but as expected, I didn't really find anything of value, so I cashed in what I had. All in all, it was great to be back on the seas, but there is still one unfinished bit of business to attend to. I was informed that I look more like a pirate peasant than a pirate king, and I tend to agree. So if we're going to rule the seas, I suppose that we should probably look the part. All right, that is much better, and I am starting to feel like my old self again. It's time to send off the bloodlust and style, so I sailed for the horizon and tossed a firebomb on the deck, picking up a commendation? Well, this is where we part ways. Be sure to come check out the live streams on Twitch on Monday nights, or come back for more tales of bloodlust, and maybe someday I'll meet you Philly scoundrels on the seas. Until then, remember, it's not about the gold. It's about the blood.